Hey guys, Dr. Mike Hitchell here, Renaissance Periodization University, and on to lecture three for the Introduction to Sport and Exercise Science course, the Applied Subfields, taking theory to practice. We're going to talk about the major applied subfields, the specific applied subfields, and then a category of classes, uh, courses called Recommendations and Guides. So the major applied subfields are level four in the RPU curriculum, and they're based in the major basic subfields insofar as they assume you know the basic majors well. That is, you've taken those courses, or at the very least had them at other institutions. What that means is they're going to be using advanced terminology from those basic courses readily and not explaining it either because that advanced terminology is explained in earlier courses so huge recommendation for level four is to have level three completed right and you can't really cherry pick level three because in level four those major applied subfield courses um, any one applied subfield may combine multiple major uh, basic courses or actually all of them Right, so it's really important to have that that basics base before you get into the applied. So when you get into level four, what level four really does is it bridges the gap from kind of basic knowledge of understanding mechanisms and processes to applicable knowledge that lets you actually train people, write programs, create diets, etc. It's really that first big transition. And because it's that first big transition, it's the first time we have this recognizable, like, oh, that would be very good to know kind of fields with names that are like, oh, that, that actually that even that name sounds like I'm going to be learning some stuff like uh, sports nutrition. Oh, sports. OK, oh, that's clearly applicable. Seemingly, it, you know, you don't, uh, you know, theoretical nutrition is a very different thing than sports nutrition, which almost kind of betrays an application parameter in and of itself. And that's very much true. So there are five subfields that, and, and thus five courses that compose this category. We got sport and exercise nutrition basics, right? We have, and, and, and the reason those so-called basics is yes, that it's applied, but we'll see later that sport and exercise nutrition branches out into a bunch of different kinds of courses depending on the application. We have sport uh, psychology, which has an emphasis on performance and sport. Uh, and we have exercise psychology, which has an emphasis on adherence and health. We have sport and exercise injury as a course. And that talks about how to uh, just basically safe practices to prevent injury, the mechanisms of injury, how to treat injury, and how to rehabilitate injury, right? how to care for it, and then how to rehabilitate it. And then the fifth course is the training principles themselves. So using a lot of sport physiology knowledge and some biomechanical knowledge and a bunch of knowledge from uh, motor behavior, this course of the training principles is generated, and, and, and that is a guide to principles like specificity, like overload, like variation, like fatigue management, talking about those principles later on, as you can probably guess, we'll have more advanced courses that uh, in the higher categories that will use the training principles and no longer have to describe what they are, but will apply them to various different sports. But here, it's a little bit too early for that. It's going to be uh, the training principles as a very much an applied idea. Okay, this is obviously where training principles clearly to be applied, but here it's going to be just the fundamental training principles in a very general sense so that once you know the training principles, you'll be ready to apply them in whatever sport or in whatever uh, situation you'll have to, which are going to be courses that are being covered later. Once you know these courses, then you're ready for level five subjects and those are specific applied subfields, right? So there's the major applied subfields, and then after you get the majors, which we recommend you get all or almost all of them, then you're ready for level five. When you hit level five, the specific applied subfields, by this point, you almost certainly should know or will know the foundational concepts and how to think scientifically. 
and you understand both the basic and applied general sciences that underpin sport and exercise science. You're a very well-rounded sport and exercise science student. Right? Maybe in this case, it would be kind of like a junior uh, or a senior in an undergraduate program by this point. Once you're in that position, you're ready to explore the specific subfields that actually have much more direct application. Because we've got all the basics and the generalities down, each one of the courses in level five and specific applied subfields zooms in on a very narrow topic. Right? So for an example is nutrition for muscle gain. That is a level five course. If you take that course just by itself, you're not going to learn almost anything about nutrition for fat loss. Strange, right? You're not going to learn anything about nutrition for sport performance. You're going to learn nutrition only the subcategory. So we got foundational courses, physiology. We got physiology first, we intro first. Then you have physiology and anatomy and introduction to uh, thinking like a scientist. Then you go up to sport physiology. You'll need to know that and a couple of other topics. And then from sport physiology or sport exercise physiology, you'll have to go into sport nutrition generally. And then once you're done with basic sport nutrition, now you can go, okay, the part of sport nutrition that was focused on how to gain muscle gets expanded into its own level five course. And that is the only concept that is covered in the course. Now, bad news for a level five course, if you take that course, Nutrition for Muscle Gain, uh, you're going to learn very quickly that it teaches you almost no basic nutrition. If you don't know what carbs, fats, proteins are, if you don't know how they're digested and processed, you're going to learn pretty much nothing. You're going to be wholly disappointed. At the very least, if you don't know those things already, very confused. The good news is about that level five course is it can start to answer questions with incredible specificity. If your goal is to gain muscle and you want the nutritional backing to do that, that is exactly the course that's going to answer all of those very specific questions. And in order to be able to fit that many specific questions in the course, we have to make sure we learn all the generalities that underpin them right beforehand. Remember those infinite whys from one of the lectures we had before? If someone doesn't have a basic backing, and you tell them a fact, they go, why? But why? But how? But why? You should already be able to justify all of that by yourself, and then we're simply giving you an ability to apply this stuff, and now it's, oh, I see, now all of muscle gain is covered. Every little tiny minute detail, we have time for it because we don't have to readdress the basics all the time. And of course, that means that these courses are based in knowledge from many others in one to four, right? And another really good example is uh, the course Athlete Monitoring. There's a course uh, in level five called Athlete Monitoring, how to take in uh, athletes, measure various things about them to see uh, if they're too fatigued or if they're properly overloaded or if they're progressing well and alter variables based on those monitoring indices. It literally, that course, is based in every single level four course uh, short of except maybe exercise psychology. Uh, why? Because the sports psychology is what applies to athletes. Every single other course, exercise psychology, all the way down, or, or, or sports psychology, etc., training principles, everything, every single one of those is based in a level four course. So uh, at this point, it's one of those situations where when you take level five courses, expect them to be based in almost the entire backbone curriculum. That's how much you have to know to take those and really get the most out of them. Now, do you have to take all the courses through level four? Yes, because most level five courses are based in almost every level four course. But do you have to take every level five course to get to level six? No. Level five is the first time in which you start to really kind of branch out. So for example, if you're studying to be a psychologist, you take general psychology, you take biopsychology, you take some neuroscience courses, and uh, different kinds of psychologists, eventually in their advanced education, their equivalent of a level five, some want to work with children, so they'll take a bunch of child psychology classes. If you instead prefer to focus on psychopathology and maybe work alongside psychiatrists at a mental institution, you don't have to have this incredible expertise at working with children because almost all, if not all, of your population is going to be adults. Just the same way, child psychologists 
don't necessarily have to have a huge backbone. They have to have some backbone understanding, but they don't have to have a really intense specialization in psychopathology because they don't work with institutionalized people uh, probably at all. So it's one of those things that if you are an aspiring athletic trainer and you want to help people deal with injuries, etc., can you know some, should you know basic nutrition? Absolutely, and you will levels one through four. But do you have to know exactly how people apply their nutrition to build muscle? Maybe not. So if you're interested in athletic training, you can branch out into more of the uh, courses that talk about injury, recovery, management, psychology, etc. Maybe not some of the advanced nutrition courses or tactical preparation courses or something like that. So you can take the courses in level five that interest you or carry over into your training or coaching best. Now, uh, you can take them all, right? It's going to take some time because there's like, oh, I don't know, 15 in there and we'll probably be adding more. Uh, if you want to be a truly consummate SES professional, to be completely honest with you at the time of this lecture, I haven't taken all of those courses myself. There are some stuff in injury management that we're going to have uh, that I have never seen. Uh, we hire somebody else to deliver the lecture. I know enough about the basic concepts to uh, spot some real good BS, but other than that, it's not my specialty. So do you have to take all of them? No. If you want to take all of them, and if you learn them deeply, not just to say you did it, are you going to be at a huge advantage as far as expertise level? Absolutely. It's going to be something really, really awesome. Lastly, we have level six in the RPU curriculum. And level six is kind of termed shorthand kind of recommendations and guides. So the recommendations and guides, they're still courses, and we're going to call them that, but they're now more like something you'd see at a college that would be a seminar uh, course, where a seminar course is something that's not usually offered all the time, and it's a course in which new discoveries, updated methods of understanding, or very, very specific situations and settings are discussed to prepare people for very specific real-world problems. So these courses at level six uh, are very specific to certain problems, certain situations, certain job types, or certain populations. All of them, or almost all of them, are derivative of more general level five courses or are combinations of level five courses. So uh, what is it that they do? Well, generally speaking, they prepare you for direct action as a practitioner, right? That means that after you take a level six course, assuming you do well with it, understand it, assuming you have the pedigree to take it, having taken all the necessary courses below or most of them, then Level six courses are going to have very little theoretical background and discussion. They're going to have almost all recommendations. This is what you should do in this situation. Here is what you should do in this situation. If the following thing does not work, here's how you measure to get the outcome that actually occurred, and here is the option for doing other things based on the following things. They're very much practitioner-oriented what to actually do. They're as applied as it gets which means you don't get a lot of theoretical knowledge, but you should have that from all the courses beforehand in the lower levels. This content, the level six, is the kind of content you would typically see individuals cover in YouTube videos, like designing a program to train powerlifters, for example. So uh, you would see a YouTube video about that, but there has to be a lot of explanation of theory and the more explanation of theory there is, the less specific people can get. But the cool thing about RPU and our versions of these courses is we're making the assumption you've already consumed all of the information from the course's pertinent requirements below those courses. Assuming that you've already consumed that information, these courses will go into really high depth and are a lot of technical detail using a lot of technical terms these basically are like application courses for the very educated. Right? The advantage there is that there's a ton of amazing content and amazing knowledge that you can apply right that very next moment. The drawback is if you're new to sport and exercise science, these are high level courses. They're going to make very little sense if you're not familiar with the terms, ways of thinking, and the basic subfields. A lot of times, these courses are so applied and so specific that the best individuals practicing what they're teaching are going to be individuals that we don't even employ at Renaissance Periodization. So a lot of times, 
we're going to be having guest speakers come in and do various talks in their exact specialty areas. And uh, as new applications of uh, sport exercise science are uncovered, we are going to be able to offer you much more frequent additions of new courses. For example, three or four years ago, maybe even up to uh, two years ago, the gut microbiome wasn't really something that was either researched or discussed. There was really no course at any university offering anything on the gut microbiome except for maybe PhD level study. Nowadays, there's much more. So an example of uh, an application course like this, a level six course, is a seminar on the gut microbiome in nutrition and health. So how does your gut bacteria influence nutrition and inf that thus influences your health? Notice how many prerequisites you have to have for that. You definitely have to understand basic physiology, definitely have to understand sport physiology, have to understand nutrition for health. And then on top of that assumption, then we get to uh, taking the microbiome and throwing that in there, throwing that on top. So that course is going to be taught in such a way that assumes you know nutrition for health already very well, and all we're going to talk about there are the differences. And that's going to be uh, an invited guest, likely someone from RPU, but uh, but possibly not. And, and there's a ton of other courses potentially just like them. So a good example of kind of the prototypical uh, sort of exemplary level six course is a course called Tactical Nutrition and Recovery, right? What is, what is Tactical Nutrition and Recovery? Well, so uh, tactical means uh, special forces, military, police, fire, uh, and, and those sorts of professionals, individuals that are moving around the world like athletes, but uh, are in fact doing very serious jobs, oft, often in, in life or death sort of circumstances. So their physical performance has to be spot on for much more important reasons in sport. And usually their activities are not nearly as well controlled and their, their training structure, their schedule of when they have to be ready or prepared is not nearly a set in stone. You don't know when the wildfires are going to start springing up. You might have a general idea of the season, but you don't know, is it today or is it tomorrow? Is it in a week or is it in a month? Uh, as a special operations military uh, per, uh, uh, soldier, you almost never know when you're going to get deployed somewhere because you know, special ops, they call you when you're needed. It might be tomorrow. It might be right now. It might be tomorrow night. It might be in three weeks. Can you really peak for something like that? Well, no. And how much does your nutrition and recovery affect your ability to perform your task? Well, quite a bit. But the thing is, we can't tell you to eat perfectly or have perfect recovery because you're going to be put into very imperfect situations. So that course is going to combine nutrition for sport performance. It's going to combine that with recovery basics and strategies. And it's going to take that intersection and focus only where the tactical applications actually are in. That's quite a complicated course. So what is going to have to happen is you're going to have to, in order to really make the most sense of that course, you're going to have to know sport performance, uh, nutrition, and you're going to have to know recovery basics and strategies. And you'll probably have to know quite a bit uh, about tactical applications, uh, perhaps about their training and certainly about their, their kinds of work that they do so that all of that advice makes sense. And we're just going to get right into the nitty gritty of giving real actionable advice with just minor justifications of why that advice is being given. So... The thing about these level six courses is that the what of these level six courses, the actual recommendations, so long as the terms are understood, which 50-50, some of the terms will be understood, some not, the what can be understood by an intelligent layperson, someone who hasn't had the basics of exercise science. Uh, they might say, okay, recommendations to eat here, not eat there, sleep in the following ways, train like this. Okay, that makes sense. It's the English language after all. But the how and the why of why those things make sense and how they're going to be changing if certain variables change, those are going to be incredibly mysterious until and unless you've had all five levels below. So those level six courses, if you want to take them without a one through five or a one through four at least backing, you can just to get the sheer information out of the recommendations. But if you want to truly understand the recommendations, which you almost certainly should if you're going to program them from other, for others or for yourself, because remember, principles are much more important than specific guidelines because specific guidelines are just derived from principles. And as the situation changes, we can't predict in a course all of the exact situations. You have to know the principles to make the changes yourself. So huge recommendation. 
get those first four levels in, a couple of the pertinent courses from level five, then advance to level six when you're ready. That's it for this lecture. Next time, another short lecture about how to use RPU to its fullest capacity to make sure you get the most out of this opportunity that you can. Thank you so much, and we'll see you for lecture four.